Hey guys, I Pokemon I here. Today's video will be quite interesting, I hope. Um, I don't know how many people are watching me that have played for a very, very long time, but I thought this video would be a very educational video about prices of Super Res back in the day. Now, I'm only going back as far as I can remember to when I started up YouTube in 2008. I knew, I remembered the types of cars that people were after. I remember on everyone's want list was Riser, super rare. And I was thinking, wow, why is that? Um, or Cyber Dragon Super, I'm like, huh? Was that card ever expensive? And yes, it was. So today, I am going to go back in time to when super rares were quite expensive because they were used in the top decks. And also, back when you get first started, or a couple years after, you know, when the internet market got quite big, there wasn't much competition. There wasn't as much competition as there is now. And getting cards back then is nowhere near as easy as it is now. So, we are going to start from Cybernetic Revolution. I was going to do it backwards, but I'm going to go through super rare card prices that jump up to my mind from backwards to current. So Cyber Dragon um, from Cybernetic Revolution, the original set, came out in Super Rare and Ultimate Rare. The Super Rare was used in a lot of decks, I think back in 2007, 2008, and it was just a, <laughs> it was pretty much a staple. It hit about 30, 40, um, I'm going to say pounds slash dollars because the number is going to be the same regardless of the um, currency. Next card we'll talk about Rise of the Storm Monarch. This also came in a Super Slash Ultimate. Um, this was used in, it was a, I think, Cookie Cutter deck or Perfect Circle Monarch. You know what? I wish I researched it all and I was going to, but I didn't realise I was going to make that video today. So maybe the old veterans will let me know what it was played in. I, I do remember, I saw a lot of deck lists back then, but I never. I saw the deck list, I didn't really see the deck names, but that was a good 30 quid as well. Now, this is a card I remember very, quite a lot actually, because I pulled a lot of these at their hype price on YouTube. Dark Strike Fighter, clearly pre Arata. This was Crimson Crisis set, and, oh sorry. Riser was Force of Breaker set. Anyway, this was Crimson Crisis set. It is the third set to introduce Synchros. And back in those days, there were a couple of OTKs flying around Dark Strike, Dark Strike Fighter OTK. Its popular one was with Demise. The other one was with Mega Morph and the um, that insect monster. I forgot the name. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. That was a pretty pretty cool card before Arata, and I remember I played it in a couple decks like that. That card was so so ridiculous. It's a shame that because of the Arata, people aren't going to know of the extreme power it had back in those days. Been this chain, never heard. This card, so Dark Strike Fighter was about thirty. Been this chain was a healthy forty. I remember when I tried to pick up, I think I've still got the set that I picked up that I paid quite a lot for. It didn't come out at it as an expensive price at all, but it was hype. I can't remember when, but there was a hype, and it was used in every single top deck. And it hit an incredible 40. I'm like, well, you think about it now, the card is barely one or two. Um, there are obviously better cards out there, but that only happened, it only came out in one rarity, and it was super rare. And... A reprint didn't happen for a very, very long time for that card. And unfortunately the spike happened quite a while after the original print came out. I think now we're going to... For Savina Shane's Absolute Power Force. Now we're going up to Gateway of the Six Samurai. This is Stardust Overdrive. Um, this only obviously increased in price after the legendary six samurais came out in storm storm of ragnarok and um, obviously came out of peanuts because it was worthless it was useless and then then the legendary samurais came out 
Now I've got the pack poster here. Legendary Samurais came out in Storm of Ragnarok. Stardust Overdrive was... One, two, three, four, five... So almost a year later, um, Storm of Ragnarok came out with the you know, Legendary Six Samurai Shien. So, um, yeah. Gateway was a good 30, 40 quid on its absolute peak price, believe it or not. There was an event where I think seven of the top eight of that Shonen Jump took, you know, took took place. Seven out of eight of the Shonen Jump was Samurais. I mean, of the top eight. That's, this is ridiculous. You know, now we're looking at 30 out of 32, a Zodiac. You know, seven out of eight, Samurais. Trigonity Knight Vajrayana. This hit an, a ridiculous price. This was from Star Strike Blast. This hit the price around Dragon Ruler Dragonity format. Around that, I think I remember that was a that was a format. Yeah, Dragon Ruler Dragonity. Yeah, and um, it hit the price around then. That wasn't too long ago, you know. Um, and obviously plummeted pretty uh, a lot since then. It actually only um, it only only went down in price when the reprint came out. The reprint came out way too late because yeah, that's what reprints do. Now, Kazan Storm of Ragnarok. Now this is self-explanatory. Um, it came out in this incredible, you know, this this set Storm of Ragnarok had Maxi in it. Maxi in it was a pretty underlooked card, and you know what? I'm going to do a price on secret rares and ultra rares and rares and commons because that's actually all relevant. But I thought I'd start with the super rares just to give you a kick, a, a reminder, or or like a surprise factor of how much the cards used to be. So Kazan was only about 25 slash 30. It was an incredible card. I played Samurais for a very, very long time. I just love the card. Now, I am talking about original prints, not reprints, you know. I'm not going to talk about the expensive CP Metamorphoses or Book of Moons or Dusters or Max Rarity um, Samurai United or something like that. I'm talking about the original rarity that it came in. I just thought I'd mention that, I should have mentioned that at the beginning. Insector Hornet from Order of Chaos. Hornet format was quite fun, I remember that. It was very diverse, you know, it was when wind-ups were around, insectors were around, Dino Rabbit, it was all a very diverse format. And um, Hornets were pretty, pretty expensive, or good 30, 30 quid. I remember that. Fun days. Now we go to, so Insector Hornet was Order of Chaos. Now we go a little bit down the line to Abyss Rising. Abyss Rising came out just after Return of the Joist. And Abyss Rising had two previously staple cards, but not anymore, which are Gugga Gugga Cowboy and Abyss Dweller. Gugga Gugga Cowboy was an incredible card. The fact that you can, the common thing back then was Gugga Gugga Cowboy for game. And that card hit a, a nice 25. Pound. That that set was really, really cool because it had, obviously, Cowboy, Dweller, and it had all the Mermel stuff, and it was a very good, consistent seller way, that way. Um, Abyss Dweller was about 20. It's quite surprising that Dweller saw pretty much more play, because it was a, m a bit more relevant back then for graveyard effects and stuff, but Cowboy just hit the higher price. Um, Dweller got a reprint much later than Cowboy did, I do have to say that. Okay, now to most recent or more recent. Who remembers the card Luster Pendulum Dragon, the Draco Slayer? When that card came out, that was Peanuts. And this card, along with Anti Emptiness, the common of course, had the craziest price increase. Luster Pendulum came out at £2, it went up to a good 40 That was just like, what? That card was £40. I saw it about 10 to 12 of them at 40 each. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I think that's the most expensive super on the list, actually. And, um, yeah, that's, that's just pretty, pretty insane. And then we go to a bit more common ones, or a bit more recent ones. Dimension of Chaos had Vector Pendulum. I want to say Dimension of Chaos was after, yes, it was the one set after um, Luster. It had Vector Pendulum, obviously it came out cheap as, as most of these Lector, Vector Vector cards come out. And it had a pretty insane price increase that lasted a couple of weeks, you know, when Draco Powers was the best deck 
um, vectors were like, they went skyrocketed up to about 20. And then here we are in these days. We currently have Teratop, which is about 10. Utopia the Lightning, which is about 15. It's, it's actually quite expensive, I'm really surprised, considering that the special edition only came out a couple of months ago. And then we have, of course, Twin Twister, which is about 10. They're all about 10, 12 even, average price each. Uh, Twister's the cheapest. Anyway, I hope you've learned something from this video. If you want me to make the, you know, ultra rare, rare, common, secret rare stuff, I will do it. Looking up these prices, asking people that I haven't talked about in ages, um, was just quite interesting. I know I got some of my f facts wrong, especially for the Cyber Dragon and the Riser, but I do remember everything from that format because I remember just getting Dark Strike Fighter and like, whoa, whoa, you know, getting really, really excited because back then pulling that card when you're when you're quite new to the game is just like, whoa, it happens. When I didn't, I, I never used to act when I got excited and pause and stuff, and I was like, Hey, money car, wicked, time to sell it. Anyway, thanks guys for watching my Pokemon I here. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did enjoy it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. These 25 days are almost over.